Broad ligament hematoma means collection of blood between two leaves of broad ligament. It can have a venous or arterial source or even both. Arterial bleeding usually results in a rapidly expanding hematoma while venous bleeding typically expand more slowly. The broad ligament consists of anterior and posterior leaflets of peritoneum which covers the lateral uterine corpus and upper cervix and extends from lateral wall of the uterus to pelvic side walls. The broad ligament is bounded superiorly by the round ligament, inferiorly by the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments and laterally by infundibular pelvic ligament where it joins the pelvic side wall. The mesosalpings of fallopian tube is contagious with the broad ligament. The primary blood supply to uterus comes from uterine and ovarian arteries. These blood vessels in stimos near the upper lateral aspect of the uterus. Several veins form the large pampaniform plexus within the broad ligament. Collect blood from upper uterus, ovary and upper part of the broad ligament. So, what causes broad ligament hematoma formation? The possible causes include rupture of ectopic gestation, post-operative anticoagulant, in Patwardhan method when the incision extends, in case of trauma to or extension of the hysterotomy at the time of cesarean can lead to broad ligament hematoma, especially when too low incision is given. Hematomas may also accompany the tubal ligation. It may result from a tear in the upper vagina, cervix or uterus that extends into uterine or vaginal arteries, most commonly following operative delivery, trauma or surgery, but it may also occur following spontaneous vaginal delivery. Let us explain the broad ligament hematoma and its management by discussing a case scenario. 26-year-old patient, para-4, presented to ER with a lower abdominal pain, a day after cesarean section performed due to prolonged second stage of the labor. On examination, her abdomen was tender and her blood pressure was 90 by 60 mm of mercury. How to manage this patient? As this is an emergency case, so in this situation, first of all, we will have to assess the conscious level of the patient. Call for help and alert the team if patient doesn't respond. Quickly assess airway, breathing and circulation. If everything is satisfactory, confirm biodata and talk to the patient if he, she is stable. Check vitals to assess the hemodynamic state of the patient. Infuse IV fluids and send bloods for investigations which include blood complete picture, group and save, cross match, renal function test, liver function tests. Check the operation notes in detail. Take detailed history from the patient. As her presenting complaint was abdominal pain, so ask about its onset, duration, severity, radiation, aggravating and relieving factors. Ask about feeling of any lump anywhere in her body and whether she feels palpitation or not. Also ask about the possible risk factors in her case, which I explained in the causes in the previous slides. In the end, ask routine obstetric history like any antenatal, intrapartum or postnatal complication in her previous pregnancies, the gynecological history, medical surgical history, the personal history of smoking and drug abuse and family history, drug history, whether she takes any anticoagulants or not and any allergy to any sort of medication. After history, examine the patient, do general physical examination and also systemic examination. Maintain modified early obstetric warning score charting. Do per abdominal examination in which specifically check for any tenderness, any mass and check whether is a uterus, whether the uterus is shifted to any side or not. Check the pad to estimate the blood loss and also start monitoring the ongoing blood loss as well. Do local examination especially of the vulva to assess the extent of hematoma if it is present. Do per speculum examination to check the health of the vagina and cervix and also check for the presence of any hematoma and its extent. And if possible, do per rectal examination to palpate for any fluctuating mass like hematoma.
So after a history and examination, what differential diagnosis can come in the mind? Those include intraperitoneal bleeding or the broad ligament hematoma, rectus sheath hematoma, intra-abdominal bleeding with a collection, pelvic mass or the ovarian mass, or it could be pelvic abscess. Now, when should the diagnosis of broad ligament hematoma be considered? It must be considered whenever there are signs of internal hemorrhage after delivery. When there is persistent postpartum pain together with a shock, when there is high position of uterine fundus, and when there is a unilateral fluctuating tumor present while examining the patient. What investigations are done in such case? After baseline investigation, we do coagulation profile including PT, APTT, INR. Ultrasound abdomen is done to confirm its diagnosis and to determine whether it is expanding or not. Now, what ultrasonography findings are suggestive of broad ligament hematoma? On ultrasonography, a hematoma appears heterogeneously hypoechoic mass representing uncoagulated liquid blood and beginning interface between the clot and fibrin strands. After confirmation of the diagnosis, debrief the patient and her relative about its implication and management plan. Tell her that if it is left untreated, it can lead to hemorrhage resulting in mortality, septicemia, and the pressure necrosis as well. Involve multidisciplinary team in the management of the patient, including anesthetist, hematologist, interventional radiologist, if available. Continue the resuscitative measures, including IV fluids like crystallides, colides, plus minus Hartman solution, 0.9% sodium chloride, and also go for blood transfusion if needed. Next come the specific management. If hematoma is small, not increasing in size, and patient is hemodynamically stable, go for the conservative management as most of hematomas resolve themselves. If hematoma is large, increasing in size, and patient is hemodynamically unstable, consider surgical exploration to, pre to prevent the complications which I mentioned before. Broad spectrum IV antibiotics are prescribed to reduce the risk of infection due to hematoma. Advice in developing urinary catheter to avoid urinary retention and for fluid balance. The surgical option in case of the large expanding hematoma include first of all the surgical draining of the hematoma and secondly the stepwise devascularization in which we ligate the bleeders to prevent the further expansion of hematoma or the hematoma formation. What is stepwise devascularization? It describes the successive ligation of different vessels in the management of PPH and management of hematoma formation as well. Those vessels include one uterine artery, both uterine arteries, low uterine arteries, one or both ovarian arteries. First, we will talk about uterine artery ligation. Take care of aseptic measures initially. Under good light, exposure and anesthesia, make sure that bladder is dissected adequately and resected downward. Exteriorize the uterus. Ask the assistant to hold the uterus and pull upward with the fundus tilted to opposite side to apply suture on one side and exposing the lower part of the broad ligament. Suture material use is number two or number one, absorbable suture. Palpate the cervix and feel for the pulsation of uterine artery near the junction of uterus and cervix. Using number two or number one, absorbable suture on a large needle, pass the needle around the artery two to three centimeter medial to lateral edge of the uh, uterus via myometrium, preferably from anterior to superior, anterior to posterior. Then the stitch is passed via a vascular area of the broad ligament and then tied anteriorly. Repeat the same procedure on the other side. If artery has been torn, clamp and tie the bleeding ends. It is advisable to ligate ovarian arteries also with the uterine arteries because of anastomosis between the two. Ligate the utero-ovarian artery just below the point where ovarian suspensory ligament join the uterus. Repeat the same procedure on the other side as well. Observe for the continued bleeding and hematoma formation. 
After ligating the uterine arteries on both sides, if bleeding doesn't stop, the next step in stepwise devascularization is internal iliac artery ligation. When internal iliac artery ligation is being considered, a senior gynecologist or vascular surgeon should be informed. It's very important to study the anatomy of the internal iliac artery. The abdominal aorta divides into two common iliac arteries at the level between L5 and S1. Common iliac divides into external and internal iliac arteries. The internal iliac artery divides into two trunks, anterior and posterior. Now I will talk about the procedure of internal iliac artery ligation. First, ask the assistant to hold the uterus. Round ligament is clamped and divided. The broad ligament is opened. Retroperitoneal space is opened as well. The common iliac artery is identified. Also identify the ureter. Identify the bifurcation of common iliac artery. Clear the areolar tissue around the internal iliac artery. Palpate the femoral pulse. Ligate internal iliac artery as shown here. Elevate artery with a Babcock clamp. Pass forceps from lateral to medial. Same procedure is carried out on the other side as well. Examine carefully for the bladder injury and repair it if found any. Ensure that there is no bleeding. Place the drain. Reverse the uterus abdominally. Close the abdomen in layers. Provide appropriate post-operative care to the patient and monitor vitals. After complete management, do appropriate documentation, debriefing of the patient, DETX meaning incident reporting, fulfill the duty of candor which means be honest with the patient, be clear and tell her about everything. Arrange audit, training and workshops in your clinical setup. How to prevent broad ligament hematoma during cesarean section? Give NCN a little above, especially in the patients with a previous scar, those having scar dehiscence, and in those who had deep transverse arrest. Thank you so much. That was all about broad ligament hematoma and its management. Subscribe on Obstant Kaili. Allah Hafiz.